So um, with the exception of last Sunday, we have been on a series of teachings under the theme fruit bearing or bearing fruit, fruit bearing. Specifically, we've been speaking to the key things that we believers need to do in order to be fruitful. We said that in order to be fruitful, it is important for us to have a, a mindset of fruitfulness. So we talked about mindset of fruitfulness. We, we also said that in order to be fruitful, we must be planters. We must become planters or scatterers. So we talked about the power of planting and scattering. It is a little confusing when um, all that we know in our world is that we must save and save and save, you know, as in saving money in order to prosper, right? To the extent that even our banks, our financial institutions have savings accounts for us to encourage us to save. And yet, here comes the word of God, amen. The authoritative word of God saying that the person who scatters is the one who increases, okay? So I think the banks, the banks didn't read that. If they had read it, they would have created a scattering account also for us. Now, if you, have, if you know a banker, suggest that to them. Maybe they should create, just like they created savings account, they need to create scattering accounts for us as well to help us to become scatterers as well. Um, I believe, you know, there is a place for saving and there is a place for scattering. So, you know, there is a time for everything, right? There's a time for saving and there is a time for scattering. But today I would like us to continue with this series of fruit bearing. And I want us to discuss the master key of abiding in Christ, abiding in Christ. Amen. It is one of the keys that we need in order to be fruitful. So please, you know, let's pay attention. Let's focus on the word and let's derive all that we can from this word today. I want to read from John chapter 15, um, verses 5 to 6. John chapter 15, the gospel of John 15, 5 to 6. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says this. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. Amen. We thank God for the reading of his word. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. What a word. Now, before I even go back to that word to take it apart a bit, I want to share um, this with you. I, I understand that there are three kinds of tea drinkers, right? That three kinds, three kinds of tea drinkers. Uh, I don't know if there are some British people out there, amen? One group, the first group of tea drinkers, they put the tea bag in the hot water and then they, they put it in just for a brief period of time and they remove it, they take it out. These people, we can call them light tea drinkers, <laughs> amen. They don't want the, the tea to be too, you know, uh, too concentrated. So they just put the tea bag in briefly and they take it out. And then there's a second group, amen. And this second group, they dip the tea bag in the hot water and they lift it up and they put it back multiple times. They, they do this, they, they put the, the deep, they dip the tea bag in multiple times and lift it up and they are shaking it as they do it, amen? And what they are doing is that they are trying to get the most out of the tea bag. I mean, they shake it, they're trying to get the tea out of the bag. 
And uh, these people, I, I, I'm, I want to call them <laughs> repeated deepers. <laughs> They are the repeated deepest. They, they drink good tea at the end of the day, but then they work hard for it. They work hard. Repeated deepest are not only toiling, but they're also inconsistent, right? They're inconsistent, in and out, in and out, okay? But then there is a third group, and that's the group you want to hear about today. There is a third group of tea drinkers, amen. Um, these people, they drop the tea bag in the hot water and they just leave it there. Come on, somebody. They leave the tea bag in the hot water because they believe that tea bag and hot water belong together. I mean, they know they are going to do their magic as they leave the bag in the water. Okay, they are made to be, tea bag and hot water are made to be together. So they don't stress out, they don't stress it at all, amen? Um, what they do, you see, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, this third group, although they do little, very little work, they get the results. They still get good results. They drink good tea, amen? Except that they don't do much work. All right, so we, we got that down. And when we, if we should bring this to the spiritual realms, the light tea drinkers who put it in and they take it out and they never put it back in, these are those who came. You know, they came to have a taste of Jesus Christ. They, and then after having that initial taste of the Lord, they went back into the world. When you ask them, they will say, hey, you know, I've been to that church before. I used to be in that Sunday school. And, you know, oh, those were good times. But where are you now? They are not, not coming back. They, they have not come back since the initial experience. You know, I used to read the Bible a lot when I was younger. But what is happening right now? When you ask a lot of people, they will say that, oh, um, my, my parents or my mother used to take me to church when I was younger. But what is happening right now? Those are light tea drinkers. And in the, in the church, in the spiritual, in the, in the kingdom of God, so we cannot even say whether those people are in the kingdom at all. But then let's look at the second group, the repeated deepest. They are those who visit Jesus from time to time. Oh my, they visit the church, they visit the Bible, they visit Jesus from time to time. They, they come around once in a while and, and in between, they, they are taking a break from the Lord. Maybe they're, they're looking for the next proven strategy. You know, they are seeking the things of the world, using the methods of the world. And then once in a while, they will come and greet, the, the, you know, they visit the church. But when things are not working out, they will find their way back to the church. And then when things are working out, they go back into the world. Those are repeated deepest, amen? But then those who stay put, come on, is somebody out there listening to this? Those who stay put, who just leave the tea bag in the water can be likened to those who abide in the Lord. That is what it means to abide in the Lord. With time, the substance comes out of you, but you don't toil or hustle for it. Amen. I pray that is your story. May substance, good substance, come out of you without so much toiling or hustling in the name of Jesus. That anointing is falling upon you today. And in the scripture that we read from John chapter 15, Jesus is saying that I am the vine. I am the true vine. The, I am the stem of the tree. I am the tree itself. You, my followers, are the branches of my tree. So if you're listening right now, you're part of the church. You are a child of God. You are a branch of the tree that Jesus, that represents Jesus Christ. The tree belongs to my father. You know, that chapter in verse one, Jesus said that my father is the vine dresser. He is the farmer. 
the one who keeps the vine, the vineyard. My father is a farmer. I am the stem of the tree. I am responsible for nourishing you. Oh my, I, I pray that somebody is getting this. Jesus is talking to us here. You know that the, the stem is responsible for nourishing the branch. Jesus is saying to us, I am responsible for nourishing you. I will draw water from, and I'll draw nutrients from my roots, and I'll pass them on to you. Jesus is literally saying that I will feed you. I will take care of you. I, I got your back. I got you all covered. You are the branches on my tree. I have attached leaves to you so that, you know, those leaves will produce fruit. But then I mean, it will produce what? Um, uh, nourishment, nutrients, amen? But your leaves would only produce the nourishment when you stay attached to me. You got to stay attached. Because when you stay attached to me, you automatically hold your leaves up to the sun. And if you know anything about photosynthesis, it is when the leaves have sunlight, the energy from the sun that they can produce the nutrients that the plant needs to survive. Hallelujah. So imagine, you know, what would happen when a branch is attached and equally sits, you know, the, the, the branch sits in the vine. The process of sitting in Jesus Christ, the process of resting in Jesus Christ, the process of remaining in the Lord, the process of drawing nourishment from the Lord, the process of relying on him, the process of allowing him to hold you up and support you. That is what we are referring to as abiding in the vine. And I want to say this again. Abiding in a vine or abiding in Christ is the process of sitting in Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody say, I'm sitting in the Lord. Resting in Jesus. Remaining in Jesus. Drawing nourishment drawing nourishment from him, relying on him, allowing him to hold you up, allowing him to hold you up. That is the process of abiding in the Lord. Amen. Oh, come on. Um, as a church family, we decided that by the grace of God, we would focus on, you know, bearing as much fruit as possible in the year 2021. So fruitfulness has been our theme. And um, you don't know this as yet, but you know, our God, if, if you don't know this, God, our God is, is not constrained. God is not constrained or limited to a calendar year. Although we decided as a church, we will bear fruit, we'll focus on fruitfulness, we will learn all we can about fruitfulness, God is not constrained to a calendar year. Dr. Miles Morrow of Blessed Memory said one thing and he said, God made time and placed human beings within time, but he himself lives outside time. I'll say that again, because everything Dr. Miles Morrow says, you probably have to you know, pause the tape and think about it. He said God created time and then he put human beings inside of time, but he himself stays outside of what he created. Amen. That means that once we do what, what we are being taught from the word of God, God will grant the fruits in his own timing. The fruit may be seen this year. The fruit may be seen next year. The fruit may be seen in five years, but God will honor his word. He is not constrained to our calendar year. Don't fall into the trap of saying, oh, well, you know, 
our year of fruitfulness is coming to an end and I haven't seen much fruit in my life as yet. And so, you know, better luck next time and, and hang up your tools. I, you can hang up your tools. God is able to do in one month, in one week, what human beings are not able to do all of their lifetime. And if it doesn't, if fruitfulness doesn't happen this year, your fruitfulness will spring forth in the coming years. And I prophesy that to you, that is going to be your portion. You will be called a super fruitful Christian, super fruitful person. And uh, let, let's, let, I know we've addressed this many times in the past, but let me just touch on it again. What are we describing as fruit when it comes to spiritual fruit? What are we describing as spiritual fruit? I hope that, you know, there, is, there are still some, so we've talked about this for so long. <laughs> I hope that there are still some fruits left out there on the trees, but fruit is substance, amen. Let, let's listen to this. Fruit is substance, anything of value, good things that flow naturally from your life. Come on, somebody say, my fruit are good things that flow naturally from my life. Fruit is all things, all the things in your life that bring glory to God. When somebody looks at your life, interacts with you, comes into contact with you, and they say, I thank God for this person's life, that is fruit. Fruit is always for the benefit of another person. You know, trees don't eat their own fruits. They bear fruit for others. So fruit is always for the benefit of others. When we bear fruit, our God is glorified. Fruit, and let me give you a more, you know, sum up definition. Fruit is the sum total, sum total of all your desirable, appealing, and satisfying attributes. The character of Christ in you that others enjoy when they come to you. That is your fruit. In fact, it's because of your fruit that people like you. <laughs> it's because of your fruit that people run to you because they want a piece of that fruit. May people pursue you. May people come from the ends of the earth. You remember the wise men, the shepherd, the wise men? They came, they traveled very long distance to see Jesus because he was a fruitful person, amen? It's because of your fruit that people come to you. Dr. Miles Muro said something. He said that um, most people don't come to you for you. Most people don't come to you for you. They come to you for what you have to offer, what you have to offer them. They come because of what they can get from you. So if you want to attract more people in your life, you, you might want to become an expert at knowing what people need and producing a lot of it. If you can know what people need and produce a lot of it, you will never be lonely. You will never be alone. People need love. People need joy. People need peace. People need our patience and our long suffering, self-control, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. That's why these things are called the fruit of the spirit. If you're listening to me, I decree that you are a fruitful person. You have the character of Christ that I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that your life is fruitful. People are pursuing you for your fruits. They are finding value in you and they're coming for, and they will pay any price. They will pay any price to eat some of that fruit. Amen. Jesus said in John 15, 5, I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. 
I was looking up the word abide, <coughs> and it comes from the Greek word meno, M-E-N-O, meno, which means to stay, stay, to remain. And, and it also means to loiter, to loiter or hang around, just loiter around without going away. Just loiter, move around in place, hang around, to hang around, me know, Greek word for abide. And, and I was looking up the Miriam Whips Webster dictionary, which says abiding means to remain stable or fixed, to continue in place, to continue in place. Abiding is not laziness. We let's, let's knock that out right there. Yeah, abiding is not laziness. It is continuing, persevering, but staying in place, in the Lord, remaining in the Lord. Abiding is a prerequisite for fruitfulness, beloved. And, and let me ask you, all we know, okay? I, mean, I just want to make this illustration here. We, we all know that something like pregnancy is an example of fruitfulness. I believe we all know that. And then we also know that people don't get pregnant through a conversation because a conversation is superficial. A conversation is, is cosmetic, is superficial, right? Superficial acquaintances do not lead to pregnancy. Getting pregnant and, and, and bearing fruit requires something that is deeper than let's have a chart. Hallelujah. Something that is deeper, something that's more intimate than just let's have a chart. Praise the Lord. So if, if you're listening to this, what Jesus is calling for is a I want you to be deeper. I want you to be embedded in me. I want you to soak yourself into me. I want you to be, you know, completely submerged in me. And once you are submerged, stay right there. That's what Jesus is asking for. Please note that coming and going is not abiding. Coming and going. If you come and go, come and go, that's not abiding, okay? We see people come to church and then intermittently, you know, they would disappear and then they'll show up and they'll disappear. And honestly, one of the challenges that we pastors have is whether somebody is still a church member or not. Please, if you see them, please tell them I said that. That is one of the challenges. So if I'm asked to give how many, how large is our church? What is the membership of our church? If you ask my assistant, she will tell you there are some people who are in the orange and we are not sure whether they are green or you know red, but we have to color them somehow and say, you know, they are at the periphery because they visit us once in a long while. Visiting, with Jesus is not abiding. You know, the, you run around, you try to use all the so-called strategies, proven strategies of the world, strategies of business, strategies of investment and entertainment, strategies of how to build good relationships. You use all of that, amen? And you think that it is these strategies that will bring increase but it is actually our ability to stay connected with the Lord. Our ability to stay connected with other believers. Our ability to draw nourishment from the wells of heaven and our ability to use God's methods of fruitfulness, not the world's methods. That is what will bring fruit in our lives. Somebody say amen. To abide in Christ is to live in him. 
embedded in him, to live in him and make him your permanent home. Oh, come on, somebody say, Christ is my permanent home. I live inside of him. Abiding means that you're staying connected. You're talking with him every moment of your day. You know, Holy Spirit, what do you think? You know, I'm, I'm about to do this. I need your help. You know, Spirit of the living God, I, you know, I come, I, I'm, I'm thinking about these two ideas. Help me to choose. Amen. I thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you for my family. I thank you for my church, for all that you have blessed me. You are constantly talking with the Lord. Whether you are in the shower, you're driving, you are, you know, at your lunch break, you are whispering under your voice. I know somebody who every time he, he or she, I don't want to say she or he, amen. Every time that person wakes up briefly in the middle of the night from her sleep, she would be uttering words to the Lord. I'm like, okay, you never stop praying. Amen. You never stop praying. That is abiding in the Lord. Hallelujah. You, you pray before you eat. You pray while you are eating. You pray after you eat. Amen. You're always communi communing. Eh? Is that a good word? You are always in communion with the Lord. Hallelujah. That is abiding. So you, you are 24 hours a day, constantly in communion with the Lord, constantly living a God conscious, you are living a God conscious life with your mind saturated with Christ. That's what it means to pray without season. You remember in uh, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, Jesus said, pray without, the apostle Paul said, pray without season. That's what it means to pray without season. So beyond that, you also want, one of the ways that you can abide is you want to periodically get away to be filled with the Lord. Get away to be with the Lord. Just you and him alone. Just you and him. A time when no one else matters to you. You shut the door, periodically you shut the door on the whole world just to be with your first love, which is Jesus. You shut the door even on your family just to be with the Lord. That is also one way in which we can abide. And sometimes you might have to shut the door on food Shut the door on food and fast so you can connect with him. And if you have experienced any troubles in your life, I just want you to know that a true branch remains in place even when the troubles come. When the storms hit, the branch remains. When lightning strikes, the branch remains. The branch is there when the sun shines. The branch is there when darkness falls on the earth. The branch just remains. If there's one word you want to pick, remain. Amen. The moment the branch is cut off, it loses any chance of survival and any chance of bearing fruit. So the challenge you know, I know that we have a little bit of a challenge in, when I talk about remaining. The challenge with abiding or remaining is that you are tempted to think that you are losing out on something out there. You are tempted to think that if I stay put in this one place called Jesus Christ, I will lose out on some things. And if you're a young person, a teenager listening to me or a young adult, this temptation is more real with you. You think that, uh, you know, going to church every time, reading the Bible and spending all my time in the house of the Lord, I'm missing out on something. When you abide in Christ, <laughs> yes, you will miss out on the drinking parties. You will miss out on that. You will miss out on the dance parties. Um, yes, you will. And you will miss out on, you know, the hooking up and with the girls, right? And all that. You will miss out on all of that. But 
you will also miss out on the hangover. You will miss out on the black eyes that come from fights. You will miss out on the cops when they come around to round everybody up at the party. You will miss out on that also. How about that? You will miss out on the evil company that corrupts good behavior. That is all you are losing. At the end of the day, you are gaining Christ. You are gaining you know, abundant life here on earth and after. Nothing measures up to that. Christ lives in us. We live in him. Acts chapter 17, 28, in him we live and move and have our being. Amen. So a person who is abiding is no longer independent. Please note this, and we're about to round up in a minute. And I, I just, you know, this word is so loaded, and can you believe this is just one verse? One verse in the scriptures. I mean, when I was a younger Christian, I, I could hear, see somebody like Dr. Otabo preach from one verse. And I'm like, how can, can you preach a whole sermon from one verse? <laughs> Amen. And, but that's how low that it is. Amen. A person who is abiding is no longer independent. You, but you, you are living a shared life when you abide. You know, excuse me to say that, you know, abiding is like being a Siamese twin. When you are a Siamese twin, you are joined in the chest, okay, or in the waist or in the head, all right, with Jesus Christ. That's who you are joined with. And, and we are also joined with other believers as well. So another way to abide is, is to fellowship regularly and talk regularly with other believers. And if you are not in church, amen, if you are not in church always, participating in your small group always, reading the Bible always, and depending on the Lord always, then you are probably not abiding. When a person starts to abide in the Lord, they cannot say things like, oh, it's my life. I decide how I live it. It's, it's my life, I decide how. No, you owe it an obligation to all of us that we live together. Because remember, we are joined at the waist, we are joined at the chest, we are joined in the head. We are Siamese twins, amen? Your life is now a shared property, a, a union, a common property with your heart belonging to Jesus. And because you're sharing your body with the Lord, guess what? You look like him. That's when you get to look like Jesus because he rubs off on you. You, you can smell his breath. You, you, you feel his heartbeat and, and enjoy. You enjoy the warmth of his embrace. Hallelujah. And, and other people can smell Jesus on you as well. They can smell Jesus on you. Everywhere, everywhere you go, they smell Jesus on you. I pray that is your story. I pray that is true for you. In the name of Jesus, somebody say, I receive it. I walk in it. By the grace of the Lord, I receive it and I walk in it. You know, there is good tea available in Christ with little to no hustling or toiling. If you should just learn to abide, there is you know, good quality tea available for you. And I just want to read Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28, so that we can uh, round up here and pray. Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It is that rest that God wants for us when he said abide. It is that rest. Rest that brings richness. There's people who toil, but they don't get the riches that Christ has promised his people. The abundant life. It only comes through abiding. 
And finally, I just want to say that abiding is made possible through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the help of the Holy Spirit. You cannot produce abiding by yourself. We need to depend on God's grace. We need to depend on the help of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot abide in the Lord. And I just want you to pray right now and say, Lord, grant me that rest. Grant me that rest. I don't want to be a, a light drinker. I, I don't want to be a repeated deeper. But I just want to come and abide. I just want to stay put. I want to be stable, unmovable, unshakable. I just want to persevere in, the, in you, Lord. When you come 10 years from now, may you find me in your house. Just pray that prayer. Say, Lord, give me that stability, that rest, that abiding grace to abide, grace to abide. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. We ask, Lord, grant us the grace to abide, oh God. The grace to remain, the grace to be embedded in you, the grace to be immersed in you, the grace to make progress, Lord, in you, in the name of Jesus. The grace to stay put and be unmovable. We pray, Lord, that we would be, Lord, we will persevere, we'll be true to the Christian disciplines and stay with you the whole journey. I pray that everyone listening to me shall not fall away. None that is listening to me, Lord, will fall away. We will remain. We will not be part-timers. We will not just visit you, but we will stay put. Draw us close to you. Join our hearts together. Knit our interests together, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And, and maybe you're, you know, you're listening to this and you are not yet connected with Jesus. So you cannot abide. You, if you are not yet connected with Jesus, you can't abide. He, he does not have, you know, he does not live in you. He doesn't have authority over you. And if you died today, God forbid, you are not sure if you will be with the Lord or not. I, I want you to sincerely pray this prayer after me. And please bow down your heads and let's pray. Say, Heavenly Father, I, I have heard your word. And I, I, I understand that I need to abide in you. But I, I have been living my own life, my own way. And, and so please. Forgive me my sins and blot out my past. And Jesus, I, I just want to say that I believe in you. And I, at this moment, I accept you into my life as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for making me a child of God. Write my name, Lord, in the book of life so that I can spend eternity with the Lord that I can abide in him on earth. In Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen.